And how's it going guys, Joshua Lefebvre here, live from LA. And in this video, we're gonna be hearing from one of my favorite people. I call him my equipment mentor, John Ross. This video is three of three in a video series called Learning Exposure with John Ross. John is the one person that I go to when I have a technical production question of any kind. He is the sole reason that I even have the camera that's filming me right now, the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. He runs an incredible production company called Subplot Entertainment. You guys gotta hire his crew. Now let's take a quick drive down the 101, down into the San Fernando Valley, where our bro Devante has allowed us to shoot at his casa. Thanks, Devante. John, the floor is yours. This was a triumph. I'm making a note here, huge success. It's hard to overstate my satisfaction. Aperture science. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. If you didn't understand that musical reference, you don't know what Portal is. You're not smart, you're not a scientist, you're not a doctor, you're not even a full-time employee. Aperture science, not the laboratory, but the concept. We already know that ISO and Shutter affect your image brightness in different ways. But the key difference between ISO, shutter, and aperture is that ISO and shutter are implemented by the camera itself. Aperture is all about your lens, baby. Lenses are basically the eyeglasses of your camera. Without a lens, your camera is just a blurry mess. But with the lens, the light is concentrated onto the sensor, allowing you to get a focusable image. Once you put a lens on your camera, it's kind of like putting on different grades of glasses. Some are good for reading up close, some are good for seeing afar, and all that jazz. At this point, everything I've talked about kind of has to do with the exposure of your image. So how does a lens affect that, you might ask? Well, besides focusing, lenses have another function. Have you ever seen images of people where only their eyes are in focus and the background's really blurry? Or maybe you've paused a video game and you've taken a screenshot and adjusted the depth of field slider. That's essentially what the aperture is controlling. Every single lens have aperture blades that form a ring inside of it. That aperture ring opens and closes depending on the setting. And that setting is referred to as an f-stop. F-stops are essentially measurements of your depth of field. Now, the f-stop scale is a little confusing, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link a little guide in the description below, and it should help you memorize where the f-stop scale lands. The bigger the circle of the aperture ring, the more light that is let in from the lens. That leads to your image becoming brighter and your depth of field becoming shallower, meaning that a more selective area of the image will be in focus. So the inverse would be that the smaller the circle gets, the less amount of light that is let in and the more in focus and sharp everything else will become. For example, if you're shooting a landscape and you want to see all the details in the trees, mountains, and clouds, you're going to want to set your aperture to be pretty high, maybe something like an f8 or an f11. Whereas something like a portrait could be shot with a larger aperture. In fact, well, when you shoot with a portrait mode on your iPhone, it kind of digitally emulates the look of shooting with a large aperture. Also to note, not all lenses are made equal. Some lenses can only open up to a maximum aperture of something like f4, while other lenses can open up to like a maximum aperture of f2 or 1.4. And that's essentially double the amount of light that that lens would let in as compared to the f4. So you're gonna have to really pick and choose and build an arsenal of lenses for different scenarios. Now that you understand the basics of ISO, aperture, and shutter, I think you can fully unlock the potential of manual mode. Using these three pillars of exposure when you're shooting, it's kind of like solving a puzzle, especially if you know the look that you're already going for. Thank you for watching this three-part series. I have a bunch of other tips, tools, and theories that I'd love to go over with you guys. If you enjoyed this series, please give it a like and subscribe because I'd love to go over so many other film theories and different topics. Be sure to leave a comment down below if you have any questions or comments or suggestions of what I should cover next. See you guys later. Thanks so much, John. You are so freaking talented. You can check out John's Instagram here and his website here. And remember, you got to check out all of the videos in this exposure series. All the links are in the description. Thanks so much for watching the video, guys. I actually have two additional videos that you've got to watch. And remember to get your free month of Envato Elements by clicking the link below in the description. And lastly, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And as always, remember to keep it chill.